and welcome back to yet another episode of my motorcycle journey and other stories. Oh, I'm just wondering, how has your helmet hair done been? Have you had to change your hairstyle so many times? Has it cost your hair? Have you had to cut your hair? So today I'll be sharing about my helmet hair journey in four years. It's been a long one. I've had to change my hairstyle so many times. And I'm hoping to help someone out there who's starting to ride or has been having a problem with their helmet hair and is looking to finally find a solution to their helmet hair. So today was my hair day and the reason why I thought it's a perfect day to do this video as well. So I just washed it. I have locks on my head and I don't wash them very often. But when the weather is like it is here in Nicaragua, it's extremely hot. Like our lowest temperatures are 28 degrees centigrade which we get around midnight when it's not hot i get to wash it a lot because it's wet the only positive side about this is that we are not riding so that helps a bit i mean when it's not hot and you have the helmet on and i can't wash the hair it gets extremely uncomfortable um itchy sweaty i mean you don't want you don't want to deal with that this video is not only going to address women. I know it can sound like it's cute to women, but even men have their own helmet hair issues. Some men keep locks, some men like to keep a little longer hair. It's not every man who shaves bald. So there are men who struggle with their hair. I'm here to help both ladies and men who have to deal with helmet hair. By the way, I just hope that nobody has ever lost a date, has never lost a potential from going on a date, removing your helmet and looking like a cartoon. So I use this, um, let me see, I don't know if you can see the back, there's, there's that button and that rubber, like elastic bud. So, This is my hair towel. I got gifted by my cousin. It looks like this. You can buy it in the beauty shop. I never saw it in Kenya. It, I was gifted by someone who lives in the US. And so I don't know if it's available in Kenya, but this is how it looks like. And when you tie it, you look like I looked. It's like a nice head, 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 head bun. It's pretty, it's comfortable. It dries the hair completely you don't need you don't need um you don't need a blow dryer even with the locks I mean my locks are long and for this length just tie this and it dries within maybe I've had it now for maybe 30 minutes it's soaking wet but my hair is dry it's a little damp of course I need to air it but there's no water so if you can find this, please, it's, it folds very small. So it's also ideal to carry on your luggage as you travel. I can imagine if I needed to carry two towels because of my hair, those would be like too bulky. So this is perfect for me. After my hair is dry, it's not completely dry. It's just a little bit damp. I normally put this is a mix of coconut oil and a little water. Do I have water in this one? No, I have no water in this one. So this is just coconut oil. And I carry a small spray bottle this size, which is easy to carry and pack and also easy to use. So I will spray this on my hair and then I will start doing it. And we can talk about my hair journey. Four years of changing hairstyles.
I go in with my hair. And of course now I'm going to start fixing the growth, like the repair. And I don't I don't do it all at once. So I don't take it would take me a whole day. So what I do, I fix as I do other things. Like if I'm reading a book or watching a movie, my hands will be up looking for the open hair and plating it. So let's continue with this story of my hair journey. The first few days of riding, maybe even a couple of months, you sweat a lot because there is the fear of so much. My tattoos will throw you off guard. People will make you scream or want to jump off your bike on the road so and then of course you're afraid of a few things that you're not used to so yes there's a lot of sweating in the first days of a ride the first couple of months let let me not even say the first days the first couple of months you sweat a lot and i would like to hear someone who says that it was that easy it was easy peasy for them they didn't have these sweaty days so I used to think how my hair is going to be sweaty and then um, I have to go to the salon so many times. And that of course would mean me having to spend more than I do spend because I used my average visit to the salon in a month was two. And with the bike, I was thinking, okay, if I'm wearing a helmet every day, my hair is sweating, I probably need to make it like every week, which would make it four times. And that would be quite expensive for me. And the other thing that I thought about, because I never consulted, like I said, I never consulted. I also thought that I wouldn't be able to manage it. Like you get to the office with sweaty hair, you have to comb it. Palmed hair, when it gets wet, it's difficult because you need to dry it. And you can't do that in the office. Not unless you go stand under the, hair, the hand dryer like this. But so in my own wisdom, I told myself that that hair is not going to be easy to manage with riding a motorcycle and wearing a helmet every day because my purpose of riding was to ride to work every day and so i cut it i honestly wish i consulted i honestly wish i even decided to keep the long hair for a while and try it out that was a big mistake so if you're here watching this video with your long hair palmed hair beautiful hair that you can hold a ponytail brush it and hold a ponytail please man, keep it keep it don't cut if i had thought of trying that out for a couple of weeks or months i probably would have retained my long hair i think it would have been easier to just hold a ponytail and brush it when i get to the office and then when i go home i can just brush it and you know take care of it moisturize it and tie it nicely in the night and in the morning i would wake up with good hair because that's what exactly i used to do when i wasn't riding i used to take care of it every day and i only used to go to the salon twice a week, twice a month so anyway i cut my hair and i texturized my short hair in my own wisdom again i i was thinking that if this short hair you're going to laugh at me because yeah this is this is not wisdom this is something else let me not give it a name so in my thinking is that I have short hair and this is the helmet and we'll probably have something like this. And so my short hair will remain neat inside the helmet. And when I remove the helmet, I'll be looking good. Like you can see in this picture here, that is what I thought. But that picture, this picture you're seeing here is straight from the salon. I haven't even worn my helmet. so. But even with the short hair, what happens is that you wear your helmet and your helmet lies flat on your hair. And when you remove it, first you wear a balaclava and then you wear your helmet. And the reason why for me it was necessary to wear a balaclava is because I had te texturized hair that I had to put uh, gel in the morning. I had to wet it with a gel in the morning to look neat. So I have to wear a balaclava so that I protect the inner lining of my helmet and then wear my helmet. So guess what happens? It lies flat, like flat. So when I remove the helmet and remove the balaclava, I look like a clown. And let me tell you, my first days going to the office like this were extremely interesting. I had to ask my colleagues for a comb because i never had a comb i never used to keep a toilet bag i never even used to carry a toilet bag when i started riding i had this job where i just wore jeans and shirts 
so i didn't really need to to carry an extra set of clothes to the office i was very okay i would wear my t-shirt um have my shirts in the office or once in a while carry it and then get to the office remove the t-shirt and wear the shirt and then wear my overcoat so my first days i had to ask for a comb from my colleagues the girls who used to keep long hair they used to carry i mean every girl knows you carry these combs in in the handbag so i learned something I learned a few things. Remember I told you the first couple of months you sweat. Yes, you do sweat. <laughs> and then now you have helmet you have helmet hair issues. So I learned to pack myself a toilet bag. I bought a toilet bag. I put a comb in it. I put um, I put a comb in it. I put a uh, deo in it. I put a perfume in it, a small bottle of perfume. I put um, lotion in it. I put wet wipes in it. Uh, what else did I have in that bag? And I had the usual, the sanitary pads and, and tampons in it. So I had a fully kitted toilet bag in my office and that used to be my rescue. So point number one, take away for you here, girls and guys, because other than the pads, you probably need the rest is keep a toilet bag in your in your office it will save you on those bad hair days bad helmet hair days yes then i realized that i didn't like my texturized hair because it was quite a lot to manage i forgot to tell you that i also used to keep a small bottle of gel in the office just to make sure that i have it neat and after some time i just grew it and cut off the texturized hair and then i decided i'll keep kinky because kinky hair is easy to manage <laughs> one more <is> wisdom <laughs> please learn from my mistakes so i put i so i put kinky hair and i thought kinky hair will be easy to to manage so for those who don't know what kinky hair is i'm putting a picture here that is the kinky hair and how you make the hair is mostly it's very dry and you just uh, rub it and make like like small baby locks so it looks like small baby locks i mean i don't know whether my picture is very clear or not but yes that's how kinky hair looks like and because it is hard and dry i never thought that it's going to get too messy with a helmet but once again i was wrong it still did go flat on my head and I remember at that point when I put the kinky hair, I didn't think about, you know, having to change my comb. The comb I used to use on my texturized hair is a, is a different comb that I would need to manage my kinky hair. So for my kinky hair, you need, or for kinky hair, if you have it, you need the Afro comb so that you can just put it in and lift and lift and lift and then wet it with some water and rub it round and then you've got your baby locks back. But now, I remember one time going to the supermarket. I think it was either supermarket or a coffee date. And I forgot my comb in the office. And I had to remove my helmet. And sit in a restaurant with hair that looks... Let, let's just say, I had to look for excuses to why I could not stay longer and we had to just cancel this date and postpone it to another day because that hair was horrible. So from there on, now I had to look for another solution. And it's at that time that I decided I'm not cutting my hair again. So I'm going to try something new. Initially, I wasn't thinking about dreadlocks. I thought, let me try um, what they used to call finger twills or straw straw setting or something like that they would look like locks but they were not locks and then they would put like a spritz spray on them and they would feel really hard and those ones were good because they would last like a week and then i would have to go to the salon wash it again and have it set again but i didn't like the business of going to the salon every now and then after all i had already stopped going to the salon like every now and then and so i was happy saving that money i decided to learn how to do them and i would do them at home and I, do, I did them for maybe two weeks and I liked it. But then I was like, why don't I just progress from this to locks? 
so i remember the last time i did them i left them and what i did i didn't wash them for almost a month i kept gelling them tighter and tighter and tighter and they looked like clothes and i liked them but when i washed them they opened up completely it's at the same time that we had already now decided we want to do the world tour and of course now my hair was becoming such a serious issue for me to think about how do i manage it when we are traveling so at that point i thought okay fine i need to have locks and i think i'll be able to manage locks and i think i won't have embarrassing moments with the locks so i looked for some guys who do crochet locks and i went there and i can't remember the salon's name but i remember they were somewhere near uh nakumat mega uh uhuru highway somewhere there but i can't remember their name yes yeah, so i went to these guys they're ugandans i went to these guys and they did crochet on my hair so they crocheted the hair and for once i had instant locks and let me tell you from then on every day was a beautiful experience i would get my helmet out wherever i'm going get my helmet out and all i needed to do was Of course, when they are short, they are not as easy to manage as this. They they don't just fall into a neat position when they are short. So you have to arrange them nicely, but still it was a better, it was way better than having short hair and long hair. Okay, long hair that I never tried, but it was better than having short hair because it never took a lot of time to just pull my put my fingers through them and put them into place and look neat. So I grew my locks from there. And that is how I ended up with locks. From my experience, I can share a few advantages of having this hair. I'm not saying that if you're riding, if you're riding a motorcycle, you need to have locks and that locks are the ideal hair. No, I respect everybody's choice of hair. But of course, in this video, I'm sharing my journey. And what I'm emphasizing on is that when you start riding a motorcycle, you're going to have many new experiences. You're going to have to change a few things in your lifestyle. You're going to change to have to change a few things in the way you do things, certain things. And one of them is going to be your hair. And that's why I'm sharing my journey with you. So I want to share with you what I can consider advantages of having locks over any other type of hair that I had before. One is that I don't have to wash them. I don't have to wash my hair every day or every other day. To be honest with you, and don't go yak, I wash my hair once a month if the weather is right. If it is cold and it is not extremely hot and I'm not riding in the dust, I wash my hair once a month, at most twice a month. So for me, that is good. And why I like the fact that I don't have to wash it all the time is because I also don't have uh, access to good showers and running water all the time. So sometimes I can go for a very long time without finding a good shower. It depends on where we are, where we are traveling, and the type of accommodation we are using. If we are camping most of the times, chances are high I won't have like a good overhead shower to wash my hair. So I am happy with hair that I don't need to wash so often. So that's one advantage for me. The other advantage is that it's easy to maintain. I don't need a salon. I can do, use a salon because I want to use a salon. But I don't need a salon. I can do my hair myself. You've seen what I've done. And the repair, the way I do my repair. And it looks neat. It does look neat. It does look neat. So it's easy maintenance. It takes very little to just make it clean. It just takes a shampoo bar, which I will tell you, I carry shampoo bars instead of shampoo bottles because shampoo bars take very little space. Very little space. They don't spill. They are not messy. I can carry so much without taking so much space. So another tip to you, who's looking for what kind of soap or shampoo to carry for their hair, shampoo bars. And I'm linking a girl who sells it to me in Kenya. The last time I was in Kenya, I carried quite enough for this journey. I'm going to put her IG here, down here, and I'll put a link to the IG down in the description box because 
I love it. I've used it quite now since January and I am happy with how my hair looks. I am happy with how my hair has responded to that shampoo and it's very easy to carry. Yes. So easy maintenance on the locks. And you know what? Even if I don't get to repair the roots, like to repair the growth, they still look neat because there is no perfect look for locks. There is no untidy locks. All locks are beautiful. All locks are neat. Trust me. Like now, I haven't finished. I've only repaired a few. A few. Very few. I think just a few here at the front. The rest is not done. But you can't tell. It's it looks neat. The disadvantages of the locks, something that you really need to think about is that if you buy your helmet when your locks are very short or small, as they grow, your helmet is going to get tighter and you probably need to replace it. You will need to buy another helmet. So they can come at a cost that way. And this is the experience I have. When I left Kenya, uh, my, my locks were short and now they've grown quite a lot. So my helmet feels a little tighter and I know it's just a matter of time until it is too tight, too uncomfortable, I have to buy another one. When they are long and thick, when it's hot, they are kinda uncomfortable. Trust me, right now, Managua is so hot and I have had to wipe my neck quite a number of times during this video. I'm only not showing you, but they can get quite hot and quite uncomfortable. They sweat quite a lot and therefore easy to start stinking, especially if you don't wash them a lot or often in the hot weather. So that smell is not really good. So that's another disadvantage of the locks. And the last disadvantage, um, and I think this is not to me, it's to everyone who may consider to wear locks, is that they might not be ideal for everyone, especially based on your career. I know some careers don't allow this. Some offices say they don't want locks. But I know those are very, very few offices that would say that. But yeah, some careers just call for not having locks. So in that case, not everybody who rides a motorcycle may be able to wear the locks even if they wanted. But there are definitely many other good options for your hair. There's a style that you've been keeping that is working for you and you can continue with that. But should you want to join me in the lock world, you're welcome. I hope this video helps you make a decision early enough and a good decision as you get into motorcycling. If you're already in motorcycling and you've been struggling with your hair, I hope I have shared with you something that is helpful to make you make a good choice for your helmet and I mean for your helmet and your hair or for your hair because of your helmet. Which is it? Make a good choice for yourself, for your hair. Jesus, what am I saying? I hope I have helped you be able to narrow down and make a good choice of hair that you need to wear so that you can keep riding every day without embarrassing moments. If you like this video, please share it with friends. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button right here. And once you do that, there will be a bell right next to it. Please click that one as well please click that one as well and you will be notified every time i put a live video i am so grateful to you guys today i have gained over a thousand subscribers i am really really happy we are in this journey together and you're the reason why i come back here to share with you more of my motorcycle journey and other stories so until the next episode, it is goodbye for now. Ta -da! That sitting position, Jesus. Ooh, I haven't been exercising for the longest. Yes, so it's painful waking up.